Good afternoon. How's everybody doing? Good? All right. Are you ready for immunotherapy? No, seriously. Are you ready for immunotherapy? All right. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to do my best to get through this in a timely fashion, let you hear from Dr. Jurgens, who's the, who's the smart one when it comes to uh, all of this. I thank the organizing committee for inviting me. Who, who is this? <laughs> who is on all my slides. Uh, he's like staring at me, making me nervous. Um, all right, so I'm going to start with the questions. Uh, so you've got them. Uh, I think the, f yeah, the first question, uh, this is the trivia <laughs> section. Um, so how many PD-1 or PD-L1 targeting agents are currently approved by Health Canada for any indication in cancer? This is just to kind of give you a sense of what's going on in the oncology world. I think the answers are two, three, six, seven. Right? None of the above is there, too. Uh, I don't think anybody's answering that. Okay. Uh, is that enough time? Do I click or something, or do I go? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, hang on. Yeah, so it's six. I think most, most of you got that. Yeah. I'm going to show you a little bit on that in a bit. Okay. More germane here. The next uh, question. Um, in gynecologic malignancies, which of the following are approved by Health Canada for treatment of gynecologic malignancies? Uh, I think the answers are pembrolizumab for... Uh, advanced metastatic treatment refractory MSI high cancer, in this situation endometrial cancer for our purposes, uh, pembrolizumab for pdl one positive cervical cancer, both of the above or none of the above. All right, now here's, okay, here's a little bit more. A lot of people are saying none of the above. And when I put my slides in, when I was asked by the committee to send the slides in super ahead of time, right? Uh, that was the correct answer, but it's not now. Uh, uh, two weeks ago, uh, the, there was a notice of compliance for pembrolizumab for MSI high endometrial and colon cancer. Uh, so the correct answer today is number one. Back on April whatever, it was number four. Anyway. So there you go. Um, so. Uh, there are my disclosures, uh, some honorary, and I PI locally of a lot of clinical trials, uh, and I uh, have to mention something about, you know, really this whole talk, I guess, is off-label uh, for, for the most part, uh, but I'm focusing it to clinical trials, which is okay. All right, so uh, major, uh, what I'm really going to focus on is current and pending immunotherapy clinical trials, uh, but to set the stage, uh, really give you a sense of the approved indications for immune checkpoint inhibitors, uh, 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 which, which is the, the, the main thrust of immunotherapy at the moment, uh, uh, and then uh, finish by uh, just uh, discussing briefly some opportunities for collaboration um, as a, a Canadian collective uh, for gynecologic cancers. So this is, uh, this, is, this is not for you to all jot down really fast. If you want these slides, you can have them. Uh, these are all of the indications from the FDA, uh, at least when I checked. Again, it's, <laughs> I put this together a month ago, so it's probably a whole bunch more now uh, because it keeps coming fast and furious. There are six, uh, sorry, three approved uh, uh, monoclonal antibodies against uh, program, uh, program death uh, uh, inhibitor, pd one PD-1, uh, and three that are approved for the ligand, uh, which is on the, on, on the uh, white cells. Uh, uh, and they're listed there with the companies that make them and all the different indications. Uh, highlighted in red there are the ones uh, germane to gynecologic malignancies, uh, the MSI high or deficient mismatch repair, uh, 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 endometrial cancer, uh, cervix cancer uh, as well. So then goes to Health Canada approved indications, uh, you start losing some of these uh, that uh, they have not necessarily been recognized by Health Canada, uh, and my apologies, uh, the MSI high should be there, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, uh, so that, that, that's, that, that, that is there. Uh, but then when you go from Health Canada approved to the, uh, I have data for Ontario, and every province has 
perhaps different rules, uh, the numbers even get a little smaller in terms of, 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 of agents and indications uh, for funded use, uh, and we're not there with the MSI high uh, at the moment. Uh, uh, we do have the notice of compliance from Health Canada, which is uh, encour an encouraging first step. So there he is again. Uh, and uh, talk on ovarian cancer. Um, uh, really high level, uh, really it's, there's, there's pretty clear rationale for uh, uh, immunotherapy in ovarian cancer, particularly PD1, PD-L1 uh, uh, antagonism. Uh, we've known for a long time to, for tumor in infiltrating lymphocytes uh, 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 seen in uh, tumors convey a good prognosis. Uh, so there must be something there with the immune system in ovarian cancer. We know that PDA one expression does convey a poor prognosis, but when these agents, which have revolutionized the treatment of uh, uh, lung cancer and melanoma, have been used in heavily pretreated ovarian cancer, the results are pretty disappointing. There's some of the statistics for nivolumab and pembrolizumab in uh, the phase two studies uh, that have been reported. Uh, but there certainly is preclinical and emerging clinical evidence to suggest that combining these agents with chemotherapy, uh, possibly with uh, uh, antiangiogenics and also with PARP inhibitors, uh, 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 provides synergy. Uh, and that is really the basis for the uh, monsoon of clinical trials uh, coming now uh, in uh, frontline ovarian cancer. So the idea of uh, maybe going away from the heavily pretreated patients to a patient population that is less heavily treated, but also trying to take uh, advantage of the synergy. You've seen these uh, this uh, in in different forms before, uh, but uh, the bottom line is that there are five large randomized clinical trials. If you sum it up, it's almost 5,000 patients internationally that will be. Uh, uh, treated as part of these studies over the next two years. This is what is consuming the headspace of, uh, of, uh, of, of the academic world uh, in frontline ovarian cancer now. Uh, there's a lot, as you can see, of some duplication, uh, which is a bit frustrating. Uh, if you can see, uh, one of those trials is a pure maintenance trial. That's the Athena trial, uh, so that, that separates that one. But the others are pretty similar. That's an IO and a PARP. Uh, whether uh, some uh, allow bevacizumab, some uh, require bevacizumab, uh, but it's the four of the five are a concurrent and followed by maintenance. Uh, and uh, there are some fine details that are different in terms of exclusion criteria and things like that. So um, we'll go old fashioned poll here. This means yes, <laughs> this means no, this means I don't know, or I'm tired, or armpit stains, I don't know. Uh, so. <laughs> Who is running one of these studies? Okay. Who's running more than one of these studies? Okay. Oh, is that, is that is it the Javelin Part 1 at 100 done? Yeah, yeah. So you, you chose poorly. <laughs> um, the, um, okay. So um, how many people don't know? Okay, so we're going to talk. Right? Um, so if you don't know, homework is to go back to your center and, 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 and look. And it may not be too late to get yourself onto one of these trials. Uh, they're very early on. Uh, but this is what's going to be going on in the next two years in frontline ovarian cancer. Uh, I think um, uh, Paul had mentioned a question about clear cell. Um, I think this is important, an important study to know about, uh, and this is being run through CCTG. So um, this is uh, dervalumab and tremolimumab. Dervalumab is a PD-L1 inhibitor. Tremolimumab is a CTLA-4 inhibitor. Uh, IND-228 is essentially a basket study uh, looking at these two drugs, two antibodies, in a number of different rare tumor types, and it included a clear cell ovarian cohort. Uh, and uh, the way this study was set up is... Uh, 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 20 patients' cohorts, and depending on the response, they would then open to another cohort. So in, in, in this study, seven objective responses in 20 patients for clear cell uh, ovarian cancer. You can see the duration of response there. That's pretty impressive, and I think that this, the hope is that this will turn into a much larger study, uh, but currently it is open and accruing to a total of 40 patients. So if you have a clear cell ovarian cancer patient in your, in, 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 in your, in your midst, keep this study in mind. 
Okay, so endometrial cancer. Um, the rationale for immunotherapy, uh, as I've discussed already, really relates primarily to uh, mismatch repair deficiency. And this is the seminal trial from uh, Dung Lee uh, in, in New England Journal of Medicine, where she essentially took patients that had mismatch repair deficient colorectal cancer or a collection of non-colorectal cancer patients that had mismatch repair deficiency and compared that to a, patient, a group of patients that had proficient mismatch repair colorectal cancer. And you can see based on the... Uh, um, uh, the, the uh, waterfall plot here, uh, all of the patients responding here are in the blue or the black, which are the mismatch repair deficient cohort. And this included patients with endometrial cancer. And this is a spider plot sort of saying the same thing. These are the patients responding. These are the patients progressing. So a pretty clear uh, uh, divide between mismatch repair uh, 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 status. Uh, and endometrial cancer is one of the more common. Uh, depending on the literature you see, it's anywhere from 20 to 30 percent uh, of, of patients uh, that we see uh, uh, with uh, mismatch uh, repair uh, or MSI high uh, uh, endometrial cancer. So, um, and this was the Keynote 28 study uh, with pembrolizumab in an unselected, well, not unselected, it was looking just at PDL1 positivity. Uh, um, uh, and there really weren't that many responses. Um, and the patients that did respond, one had MSI high, one had this ultra mutated phenotype characterized by a, a mutation in pole E, uh, and they didn't really know uh, about the MSI status of the third one. This one also may have been an MSI high. Uh, so um, pembrolizumab is a single agent in microsatellite stable endometrial cancer, probably not all that effective. Uh, however, as said before, I think there is some uh, uh, um, uh, suggestion of synergy with antiangiogenics, synergy potentially with chemotherapy, uh, and, and that is the basis of a lot of these uh, trials here, um, uh, including this study, which I'll tell you about in a second. I'm going to talk more about it on Saturday at CCTG, uh, but uh, the uh, uh, Merck is uh, running two trials, uh, 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 one that is a second-line trial for patients who have progressed on carboplatin taxol, where the standard of care is either doxorubicin or weekly paclitaxel, and they're using this combination, lenvatinib and pembrolizumab, lenvatinib being a small molecule tyrosine kinase inhibitor, uh, and um, an early study of this combination in an endometrial cohort showed a really significant response rate, 45%, with a, a long median progression-free survival for a second-line uh, study, uh, but a fair bit of toxicity with that combination. Uh, so we'll see how that goes in a larger uh, uh, patient uh, cohort. This is the schema for uh, uh, NRG-GY18, which we have signed on to with uh, CCTG. So this is a first-line metastatic study. So patients with measurable advanced disease where our standard of care would be to give them carboplatin and taxol. Um, sorry. Um, and it is... Uh, a, either the addition of pembrolizumab concurrent with that chemotherapy and then pembrolizumab maintenance or matched placebo for that same duration. Um, patients, uh, they, they have amended this such that you do have to have uh, central verification of mismatch repair IHC uh, before they can then go on to enroll. Uh, and the sample size is here. They're enrolling patients both with proficient mismatch repair and deficient mismatch repair, and they're analyzing them differently with a primary endpoint progression-free survival. Okay, so then move on to cervical cancer. Um, the um, uh, study in cervical cancer of pembrolizumab, again, one of these basket studies uh, uh, looking at uh, uh, pembrolizumab in cervical cancer this is a Keynote 158. This is just published in the JCO. And one, another one of these waterfall plots. Uh, all the gray here are patients that were enrolled that are PDL1 positive. You can see most of the, pretty much all of the responders were PDL1 positive, not very many PDL1 negative patients in here. Uh, response rate here was about 15%. Um, and on the basis, uh, so a, 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 a phase two study with a 15% response rate, um, uh, progression-free survival in the order of about four or five months. Uh, here's my little editorial comment usually, uh, where I come from, that usually means don't go on to a phase three study. Uh, not all that active. In this case, it got FDA approval. Um, so I, I don't really I know that I'm all that convinced based on pdl one positive cervical cancer. I think the right thing to do, and there's another study with nivolumab, uh, 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 modest responses in cervical cancer. They did enroll a few patients with vaginal and vulvar cancer without much activity. Uh, 
Uh, so I think the right thing to do is a randomized study. Uh, uh, and there are two randomized studies now, uh, one with uh, that we're enrolling uh, at my institution, uh, looking at the addition of pembrolizumab to standard of care uh, 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 chemotherapy uh, with bevacizumab. Uh, and the second trial uh, that uh, I'm sure some centers have uh, with uh, uh, this uh, novel uh, 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 PD-1 agent uh, from Regeneron, comparing that to a number of different uh, standard of care chemotherapies. Uh, so hopefully some comparative studies are going to show uh, some advantage to cer in, in cervical cancer. So that's my whirlwind tour um, in gynecologic cancer. Uh, this is a... Uh, Reminder uh, tomorrow. This is this is this is where we get to meet and collaborate uh, uh, and and uh, brainstorm on ideas, particularly around immunotherapy and gynecologic cancer, and 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 look for opportunities. Uh, so that's where we are uh, tomorrow.